Hello and how's it going today? And I am back with another movie review and I watched a horror movie. Yes, for the first time in ages, I've watched a horror movie at night. And bear, and bear in mind, I, I had to pick a movie that didn't wasn't too jump scary. That was short too. I picked a movie which was an hour and 15 minutes. I want to tell you, this movie was good. I knew it was going to be good from the start. And this movie is called Project Eerie. It's about Jesse and Jacob Warner, I think, or Super Brothers, obviously. And they break into this abandoned house. And they find, like, a CD called Project Eerie. And they begin to watch it. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, fair enough. Then see what they're watching. And it just goes straight to the movies. I did not realise it was an anthology. I thought it was going to be a watching something, but I should have guessed it. When they picked up a, a CD and they started watching, you know, tapes on it. And the first tape was showing this this dad and his girl, his daughter go into like, the park and then um, you know as they venture on the park the security guard comes up you know looking all suspicious bear in mind that will contain spoilers in this too like I ever do in every movie and I knew this I, I was like there's something odd about the security guard about the park saying just be very careful don't be filming here it's park rules and I feel myself there's something wrong with this dude he's either possessed or something because the way he was looking the way he was talking made it sound that way. But the dad didn't think much of it. He took his daughter around and he came across this beach. Well, he came across a sign saying, don't go here to the beach. And he went to the beach and he saw a dead body. And he immediately let the sheriff and the sheriff was like, you know, security guard or whatever. I'd say, I'd say security guard. And he says, there's a dead body. And the security guard said, nothing there. What are you talking about? And he said, well, I've got it on film as well. And he said, you sure you didn't do anything? No. And before... He went home, he was in his, ca he was in his like, caravan, and obviously that old horror movie cliche of, oh, where's my keys, I lost my keys, you know, and and he was looking for it, and then, you know, he's told, he told his daughter to go sleep and stuff, I'm shortening this out, by the way, it's not entire all this happening, and then he wakes up, he finds his daughter isn't there, and then he hears his daughter's voice calling that screams, he went to his like, abandoned house, and he sees, that you know, he sees that this girl, who I assume is his daughter screaming and like a, a, a sheet over her and he gets over there over the head by the, the security guard the sheriff or whatever and then um, as the, the security guard drags him he puts he pisses him on the sand and then the sand just kind of sucks him up basically it's just like you know that quick sand or something like that it sounds like there was a creature in it I'm surprised by that though I'm surprised I didn't expect that to come but I knew the security guard was a demon. I had a feeling with the eyes all black and he revealed it. I mean, yeah, I was kind of freaky. But then these two dudes. And there was another tape that I was showing, which is these two dudes. Actually, um, saying they would find this guy called Ken something. And because it's this guy, supposed that like, killed his like, wife and daughter. And then if they finally get a reward, like, whatever. And then... Um, uh, they they find and they they you know time up and ask some questions but then this guy said he didn't do it all the obvious horror movie lines oh I didn't do it. you got to believe me something happened and there's a radio call saying oh quickly um you know not quick we were saying oh they said it sounds like a distress call some sort of like testing or something like this they said oh this is a test make sure you're locked up and everything I think I don't know if they they mentioned the word astronaut because one of the characters said he mentioned the the. Radio and I said, there's like an astronaut or spaceship that's come down. And the wanted guys that are coming out looking for what's going on, seeing what's happening, and wondering what, why there's noises and wondering why the radio and I said, and he comes across a spaceship or whatever astronauts would be in, you know. And he eventually gets back and he's like, oh, I didn't really see anything out there. But then he sees the astronaut, he sees an astronaut outside. And, he, and then it's, it's you know, it's parties, you know, his friend goes, oh, it's an astronaut, oh my god, and he opens the door and he shoots, you know, the astronaut opens the door and he shoots the astronaut. And one of the guys think he's down, but yeah, I like the whole fan footage, this is fan footage, by the way, I like the whole fan footage where they pan the camera that way and nothing happens, and they talk to him and they, they and quickly pans back and there's an enemy right there. I love that. That's what gets me, you know, because it's like, you know what's coming, if that quick data, that quick piece of thinking, and boom. And then um, the astronaut just behind this dude, and this dude starts like, I think he's like a can. I, I call him a cannibal astronaut. I don't know what he is. Maybe it's an alien in disguise, that's probably what I think. And he's him, and then this guy starts saying, you know, come out. And then um, I think this guy was still tied. And then eventually, this, his friend, you know, the guy's friend that got, you know, 
eaten or something, you know, got like um, killed by this dude. Runs out and then um, he comes across this guy in like a yellow hazmat suit, which is unusual. Hazmat suits might be white. But he then comes out and it's like, he says, I'm doing I'm trying to hear, I'm here trying to help you. And then boom, the astronaut gets him. And then, um, yeah, I mean, this, this this movie, man, I mean, this sort of gets him. But then, yeah, and then, um, what else? Oh, that's, that's sorry. I'm trying to remember what happened in the last bit of the movie, the last tape. And then the astronaut gets him, and the, the astronaut eats him as well. So, yeah, he, get, he gets two dudes, because the dude that was tired, was it, the adventure was there and stuff. So, yeah, it's that tape was good, too. I'm showing this as best as I can. And then you, the last tape we got, two paranormal investigators going to like, this this house in the middle of the woods. Obviously, you don't trust those sort of things. I wouldn't do it, personally. Anyway, and then this Amish guy started saying, I think his name, Abno or something like that. Abno, 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 I'd say Abno. And he says, has this haunted, blah, blah, blah. And then when they went, the night progressed, they start seeing that like, the spirits, they hear noises. But, you know, they tried to do a Ouija board. And then what, well, obviously, one of the friends gets possessed. But they show one of the scenes of, like, this guy, obviously, like, um, being possessed and stuff like that. Well, no, this guy plays his camera down. One of the guys plays his camera down. There's, like, a demon come out from, like, you know, behind the door. And then the, the other guy, they show the other guys coming. It's like there's a scream, and this guy was like, I think he got possessed by something by the demon. And it's best also not in this movie, too. The, the Amish dude, he I, he, I knew he was, there was something up with him. He was possessed and stuff like that. That I kind of knew that from the start. I knew there was something wrong, 100%. And then, and this guy runs out and stuff, and he sees, like, you know, like, obviously there's this creepy moment where there's, like, a woman that was playing, like, a pram or trolley a trolley i don't know what you call it but is that where you put babies in it? it's got like um like a thing over it to cover it i don't know what you call them a straw i don't know what it is and then that was a creepy moment seeing that ghost woman right there and then as he went to where he sees like this scarecrow looking thing and he wears i think it's probably meant to resemble him i don't know and then it pans quickly back and it's like this demon comes out as i was killing him and stuff and then boom and then pan back to the last part of this movie, where it was Jesse and Jacob, right? So, you know, now we see these two, and we'd be like, oh, I wonder if they're going to be getting caught by the CIA or whatever, or government testing for city security. I mean, I don't know. And then I knew it was going to happen at the end. And then they start escaping this, this gunman, this guy trying to chase him with a gun. And I think one of them, one of the guys started, like, one of the guys on the floor broke, broke his leg or something like that, or injured his knee. And then when the, the, the last bit shows the, uh, his brother getting kidnapped in a van. And yeah, so it just ends. I mean, there's also text in it, which I would not be bothered, you know, saying what it said. You can watch it for yourself if you want, if you want to watch this movie. Yeah, I thought this movie was good. I enjoyed it. I expected it to be the way it did. I mean, it kind of, it felt like fear footage. It felt like the fear footage and dash cam in one. You know, dash cam, you got people driving, you got like, um... Stuff escalating just a bit. But for that fear footage where the demons in this one were f a fear footage-esque. The acting was brilliant from the get-go. Honestly, it wasn't like over-dramatic acting. It's like the, the acting was perfect for this sort of movie. I knew it was going to be good when I watched it. I was like, this could be good. And it was as well. I mean, I was happy to watch this movie. I mean, especially at night where I was never going to do it. But I'm glad I did. You know, one don't get any type of movies is... They always seem to lose their keys and phone. And whatever they have. And it's like, oh my god, I left everything back at the campsite or the cabin or at this place. How in the world? I know it's a horror movie and it's all this common occurrences happen. But you need to have something where at least give it to someone that's trustworthy. Put it in your coat pockets. Put it in a zip pocket. At least. So then at least you know it's on you. Don't be forgetting a key. I, 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 I even panic when I feel like I've lost something in my coat pocket. You know, at least I keep having to pat my pockets. These people, you can't forget stuff in, the, in situations like that, literally. You know, there was also one bit of the movie too where there's a security come outside the house. I know whose house it was. And there's this, this person dressed in all black, you know, attacked these people. You couldn't see it though. I didn't get what that was about, why they showed that bit. But you can watch it for yourself so you can understand. Like, this is the thing, like, this annoys me about horror movies. And these, I know, I know it's acting, but the main characters, even in real life, you know if something's dodgy. 
I would never be able to film paranormal stuff in like a house in the middle of the woods. That you know something dodgy has happened there. That people play with all sorts because the the the, the whoever lives there is lonely. They they'll probably conjure up some demons and spirits. Of course, like this is it makes me wonder too. Is that why murders happen in real life in forests from one person because they're under the influence of being possessed and they go crazy? That's really what causes it. I don't think they do it. I don't think they they necessarily kill themselves. Anyway, I'm going off topic a bit. But I I really enjoyed that movie. It's I know I think the reason why I had to escalate is because of the duration of the movie. That's why I had to escalate. That's why why they had to do it quickly because they couldn't fit so much in in that much time. So they did it briefly. I, I mean, this sort of situation, man, I would just lag it. Like, running ain't going to do nothing. They'd be like, help, help. How are you? Why are you saying help in, like, the middle of nowhere? Seriously, like, you're saying help. You're, you'll be lucky to find another person that knows how to actually protect you in that situation. In that situation, I would just be like, yeah, take me then. Go on. Because running ain't going to do nothing. Very rarely do horror movie victims escape situations like that. And literally, like, and besides, like, I don't think that the people at the end were actually just CIA agents or from the government. But those boys, to be fair, like, I think they were followed. And after they watched that tape, then they got caught. Part of me thinks serves them up because you should be stealing and taking things that are classified anyway. Like, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, there should be a VHS movie where, this is what I always expect, I don't know why. When I watch VHS movies, everything they watch in the tape, I expect to come to the people that are watching it. Say, for example, if, if there's three tapes, one contained Bigfoot, one contained Aliens, and one contained probably Demons well, or Skinwalkers. There needs to be a movie like that where the people that are watching it has all, the, has all those types of enemies chasing after them. That would be a great ending to that sort of a movie because then everything that they watch there is coming to get them that's phenomenal i don't know what there might be a movie out there like that and i think this movie is a horror anthology i think it's partly to do with anthology because they're showing different tapes and different you know so it's kind of similar to vhs basically i don't know i thought the live i did not expect this movie was going to be like that at all but if i had to rate this movie it wasn't the greatest it wasn't the scariest it wasn't the best You know what? I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I think that's fair. 8, 9 and 10, it's not the greatest. It's not like dash cam where it imploded, exploded into life. It, would, it escalated a bit though. But I wouldn't say it was as frantic as the other type of movies. Maybe it's a 7. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. You know, considering it wasn't the scariest. You know, I would say it's mild. It was tame, but it's good entertainment to watch. But it's a good movie. I recommend anyone watch it. You might be able to actually tell me any more deeper information about what you think you know the theories these tapes were for me i think all of them are to do with government testing sites at certain areas that's what i think it probably was and it made it pretty obvious in the movie but let me know what you think your theory might be more deeper than that if you give a like you know please give this video a like comment share it already know subscribe and hit the button notification below and i'll see you in my next video